Hello, I'm Ju Hyung Jun, and I'm going to introduce our recent work, Artificial Intelligence Approach for Detecting Pathological Voice. Here's our line for this presentation. I will start with the introduction, discussing why and what I did, followed by method section where I explain data, features, and algorithms, and I will deliver some results and end with conclusion. Moving on to the introduction section. The motivation behind this study are based on the issues existing in the medical field and we saw some opportunities which may help to mitigate the problem. It is known that many developed countries suffer from rising healthcare costs. On the contrary, underdeveloped countries suffer from limited accessibility to diagnosis. On the bright side, two opportunities hint for the possibility of a solution. Those are the recent development in artificial intelligence and mobile phone penetration throughout the world. Both news are in line with the idea of telemedicine. For example, image analysis tools are widely adopted in the field of radiology, and around 75% of sub-Saharan population in Africa has a mobile phone. I want to take these advantages to explore ways to develop an early and non-invasive diagnostic tool. The figure on the top shows the objective of our study. We try to develop an automated voice analysis tool that is potentially useful in screening voice disorders. When a new piece of voice signal is presented, trained AI model decides to which category the signal belongs, based on features and rules formed in the training session. In summary, we try to detect pathological voice with artificial intelligence. An illness can cause a wide range of symptoms, for example, fever, dry cough, and growing pulmonary fibrosis are common symptoms of COVID-19 pandemic, which clinicians look into. And some researchers rely on AI to distinguish the disease. Similarly, laryngo cancer is known to exhibit some features such as white spots on a vocal cord and a voice change that lasts more than two weeks. Therefore, the bottom line of our work is to guide the model to detect this subtle change in the pathological voice. It is also important to establish the need for such an analysis. On top of the aforementioned problems, additional problems exist. Laryngeal cancer can severely impair the quality of life of patients and their families because it affects an essential part of daily activities such as eating, drinking, and speaking. With a comparatively high survival rate, the disease is often lasting. Clearly, there is a need for such a screening tool, and early detection is known to be the key factor for a successive cure. Next one is the method section. First, I will deliver a summary of our work. The voice samples used in this study are four second long signal of a sound ah which is recorded at 50 kilohertz with an advanced speech recording equipment there are 130 healthy subject and 50 cancer patients the figure on the right shows signal plots from each class machine learning algorithms used in this study include extreme gradient boosting support vector machine like gbm and logistic regression methods Deep learning algorithms are 1D CNN and 2D CNN, namely convolutional neural networks. The detailed structures of nets are discussed in the later parts. We use five-fold validation methods to compensate for the small data set. Machine learning method requires a predefined features, so prop features are introduced, which is a common speech analysis software in phonetics. 14 features are extracted in total. Considering either input shape requirement or computational cost, we utilize downsampling and zero padding for 1D CNN and short time Fourier transform and cropping for 2D CNN. 14 prop features include mean and standard deviation of fundamental frequency of a sound harmonic to noise ratio, and zitter and shimmer variants. The last two sets of features are a measure of perturbation in acoustic analysis, where zitter demonstrates the frequency instability, whereas shimmer represents the amplitude instability of a signal. 
These are shown in the figure on the right. Harmonic to noise ratio denotes the degree of acoustic periodicity in the aspect of energy. Next, for the 1D CNA application, downsampling and zero paddings are utilized. In order to reduce the computational cost of a CNA model, a raw signal has been downsampled to 22,050 Hz, which is one of the common frequencies. By the Nyquist theorem, the converted signal can accurately represent the half of the sampling rate, which is around 10,000 Hz. This value is well above human voice range of 8,000 Hz. Therefore, we have successfully reduced the computational cost while maintaining the scope of information in the audio signal. <coughs> As a common practice, zero paddings is added on both sides. Next, a raw signal has to process a series of conversion to be used as a 2D CNN input. First, a raw audio signal has been converted to a 2D array shape through a short time Fourier transform, resulting in a big image. Yet there exist other conversion methods such as MFCC, which is featured by the usage, by the usage of bias filters concentrated on the lower frequency range. In fact, this naturally makes more sense considering human voices are more distinct in that range. From the big image, only bottom 100 rows are used, which represents approximately up to 10 kilohertz. Also, random cropping along the time axis has been performed with width of 100. This process reduced the input size for 2D CNN and also brings a data augmentation effect because we take 5 cropping per each image. The figure at bottom is a sample image produced from normal and cancer subject. One can easily notice the higher frequency range of a female voice. This slide is to deliver further explanation of a SDFT process. Let's say we have a time domain signal here. First, we cut out one segment of a signal with some window size, which gives us a small signal here. Both ends of signal is then attenuated to provide stability, followed by a Fourier transform and compute the power spectrum. This plot is then rotated and placed as one vertical line with its intensities represented with colors. Then the segment window is shifted by some amount going through the same process to create another vertical line which is then concatenated to the side. As a result, the vertical axis represent the frequency range and x-axis is essentially the time. 100 by 100 image is equivalent to a 0.5 second and frequency up to 10 kilohertz. Now let me list up algorithms and explain their fundamental ideas. Machine learning models are support vector machine, decision tree families, and logistic regression. First, the governing idea of SVM is to construct an optimal hyperplane that divides between classes. Additional nonlinear mapping is utilized to achieve a better classification performance. Next, the decision tree learns the best set of questions to ask and their sequences for an optimal classification. The obvious limitation is that the single decision tree can easily overfit. Therefore, a series of techniques are used to boost performance. First, begging combines prediction from multiple trees. Boosting increases influence of high-performing models by assigning bias weights. Gradient boosting utilizes great in descent to minimize errors in sequential models. Further, methods such as parallel processing, tree pruning, regularization are introduced for a better result. The extreme gradient boosting and light GBM take advantages of most techniques listed above. Logistic regression is a type of classification method which uses the distance information of all data points. Optimization process position a hyperplane towards the center between classes.
The table here shows the detailed structure of a deep learning model. Notice the input shape for 1DCNN is 110,000 by 1, whereas 2DCNN is 100 by 100. There are some couple important aspects to the structures. As audio is a long sequence, aggressive pulling was tried and worked well for 1DCNN. Stacked one by one convolutions allowed efficient computation, which halved the overall cost. The inception modules allowed the application of different filter sizes. Here are figures to help visualize the structure. Unlike machine learning algorithms, deep learning algorithms also perform feature extraction. A list of convolution block is known to play a role of feature extraction and fully connected layers take classification part. We consider STFT process is also part of feature extraction process. The schematic diagram for convolution block are provided on the right. This is for 1D CNN and this one is for 2D CNN. In the results section, I will provide evaluation matrix table and confusion matrix. This is a summary of machine learning result. At first glance, the accuracy seems to be high, but the numbers can be misleading. Because of data imbalance between normal and cancer classes, if a model predict majority to be a certain class, the overall accuracy can be high which is the case of logistic regression. The 85% accuracy is high, but one can realize it is not a good classification model by looking at the confusion matrix here. On the other hand, <clears throat> the confusion matrix of like GBM model has a higher proportion in the diagonal axis, proving that this is a good classification model. Both the deep learning model showed a higher performance with the highest accuracy of 92% in case of 1D CNN. Notice the numbers are higher in the matrix of 2D CNN due to data augmentation. The learning curve on the left shows few limitations which will be discussed in the next section. In the conclusion section, a summary limitation of current work and future tasks are discussed. In conclusion, some machine learning algorithms and both deep learning algorithms achieved meaningful results in detecting pathological voice. Evident in machine learning case, data imbalance between classes may lead to a misleading result, so a careful analysis is needed. Here are some limitations. First, in reality, there exist hundreds of benign cases outside of normal and pathological criteria. So future work should expand scope to benign classes, making it to a multi-class problem. Particularly in the medical field, both patients and clinicians demand an explanation, that is, Current black box classification result cannot provide credibility. Therefore, in the future work, explanation tools such as feature importance and visualization method need to be explored. From the learning curve, we notice the training is very sensitive to the initial split between train and test set, which means some subset better provide generalization of a class and some don't. The covariate shift needs to be assessed. Moreover, overfitting and fluctuation were observed as well. Literature guide that the fine-tuning of batch size, regularization, and structure can help the issue. That's all I have for this presentation. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be looking forward to hear some questions and advices. Here is my contact information.